Hello, guys, and welcome back to the podcast. This is Paint the Town Dead, and I am one half of your host, Caitlin. And she's here with the top host in the universe, Andrew. That's me. That's high praise for yourself. Y- you know, you got to fake it till you make it. That reminds me of a GIF. I sent uh, a group text with John in it. It was, so we're, we're me and some of his friends, we're going to do D&D. We were going to start a D&D thing. Oh, yeah. I've been, I keep forgetting to ask you how that well, is we going. We haven't really, we made our, we're making our characters. I've made mine. John braggadociously said that he made, <laughs> this is what he said. I've literally made like 20 characters since we started talking about all this, just to get an idea for what I'm doing. And I sent a gif of uh, Zach Galifianakis in the Between Two Ferns. Uh, which gif? And it, sa- oh, it says, how's bragging camp going? Oh. <laughs> and I was like, got him. <laughs> it's one of those things like, uh, it kind of reminds me of playing Skyrim or something mm-hmm. where I'm like constantly starting over. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a different thing that I don't. You don't, yeah. I actually have been playing a lot lately and I've been doing stealth again, uh-huh. but I've been like trying to, I've been do- using illusion, Ooh. which at some point makes it too easy because you learn invisibility. <laughs> and nobody can ever see you. I, I can't be seen and I can just run up to you and just like poke you with a dagger and you're done. Boop. You're done Uh, Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I gotta remember, it's been a while since I visited my character. She uh, is a druid um, and I can't remember her race. Um, it's something like a water, like, cause I wanted to be a mermaid and John was like, there's not mermaids in this. And I was like, well, that's what I want to be. And he's like, okay, there's this thing. I can't remember what it's called. It starts with a G. But it's a druid. I want to say ganache, but that's not it because that's chocolate on top of something. <laughs> Seems like you should know what you are. It's been a, it's been over a month since I visited my character. Maybe two months. It's oh, been sounds a while. like it's going great. It's been a while. Anyways, she's a druid and she's not a sneak archer, which okay, is my good. typical. An elf sneak archer is typical for me, you know, in Skyrim. So she's not that. She does magic stuff and talks to animals and stuff. What kind of magic? Do they have schools of magic in D&D like they do in <sighs> Elder Scrolls? Kind of, kind of, sort of. Because, man. It, it, it's more like you you have power, af- affiliated powers with like earth, water, fire. Earth, wind, fire. Type, yeah, type thing. Yeah. You, so, you know, the band. Yeah, exactly. You really like yeah. the band. I'm, I'm glad you picked up on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Or are they the elements like in Avatar, The Last Airbender? I which don't Which is remember. like the Earth Kingdom and the Fire Kingdom and the Water and then the Airbenders. I, don't I know. think that's what it was. That's an odd classification. Uh, we did. Uh, oh, what was I going to say? I've lost it. It's gone. Goodbye. Maybe they're all like Pokemon types. There's fairy and psychic and ghost, and then there's lightning. And oh, John. Rock. Uh, I know what I was going to say. John made a silly one, and uh, he named him after Jake from Adventure Time, the dog. Yeah. One of. They were at a uh, murder mystery party, party, and his character's name at the murder mystery party was Randy Butternubs, <laughs> and John named his character Randy Butternubs. It's <laughs> pretty good. I assume that's different from the train episode. The train? Yeah, it's not a train. Okay. Anyways, it was. Uh, I love that so. Much. And I'm Randy Butternubs. <laughs> it's perfect. Why don't you uh, tell us what, what we're here for, Caitlin? It's not Randy Butternubs, I'll tell you that. That's too bad. It is, because that is such a good name. We are here, however, uh, for a case today that I'm going to be doing. It's me today, finally. It's a bad call weekend. Was it last weekend? All my days are running together. I don't even remember. It was, this has been bad. Anyways, uh, so we're going to be talking episode 72 today. About Ebby Jane, I think it's Stepic. What do you think? Go for it. I, I, did, I didn't see anywhere how to pronounce it. I, I should know. I feel really bad when I don't know our victim's name, like how to pronounce it. Well, it'll never be worse than uh, Tony Alamo, so just go for it. <laughs> We're like, it's definitely Tony Alamo. Um, anyways, we'll be referring to her as Ebby anyway. So, um, anyways, this week's case is one that I remember very vividly when it happened uh, and when stuff occurred after it. But I was totally floored when I heard it. It was so weird. And it's going to be one of the most bizarre cases that I think we'll cover. Um, So let's get into it. So Abby was born on March 31st, 1997. So she's young. 
From the beginning, her mother encouraged her to be her own person and to also stay grounded in her faith. They're a very faith-based family. Abby's parents uh, had a bit of a tumultuous relationship, and they divorced when Abby was in first grade. So Abby was raised with her older half-brother and a younger sister, and Abby's mother, Lori, would go on to marry a man named Michael Jernigan, who was a real positive role model in Abby and her siblings' lives. They got along really well. They really looked up to uh, Michael. She loved the beach. She loved the color purple. And she dreamed of going to cosmetology school. Uh, and Lori said that Abby had a fiery personality and a killer sense of humor. So school was kind of a challenge for Abby and she struggled to kind of fit into a specific group, but she was always willing to do everything she could for her classmates. Uh, The friends she had were like very dear to her. She loved them very fiercely and she was incredibly loyal to them. Um, But her mom said that she had difficulty discerning people's motives of like why they were wanting to be friends because some people would take advantage of her because she was so, when she was your friend, like she was so giving and caring. Some people took advantage of that. Um, So I think that's where she struggled was almost a little bit naive, kind of. Like learning to say no also. Yeah, yeah. So um, at the time of our case, Abby was an 18 year old senior at Central High School, which is where John went. Uh, she had previously, it's a big school in case you don't know, it's a, it's a real big school, historic school. She had previously attended Lisa Academy. I never heard of that. Have you heard of that? Um, I think there are multiples. Okay. Potentially. If there aren't, I know if there's only one, I know exactly where it is. It's in either North Little Rock or Sherwood. It's on like the border. Oh, okay. Off the, uh, off like 57, 157. Um, it's where a Best Buy used to be. Oh, okay. I think it's a series of charter schools. I think they have like different grades. I know it's a charter school, but yeah, if there's more than one, I don't know which one she would have gone to, but if there's only the one, I know exactly where she went. Okay. So I'd never heard of it. I know there's a lot of private schools in Little Rock, uh, but I hadn't heard of this one. Well, I mean, it's not private technically, but it's a public charter or whatever, however that works. Um, there are multiples. Okay. Um... Anyway, she decided she wanted to to transition to a public school for her senior year. I guess a big public school because it was very, um, one of her friends described Lisa Academy as there, there wasn't a bad group there. Like there were no, like it just wasn't tolerated. You didn't have to go there. You could go to a different school. So if you were, you know, into bad stuff, you were, you know, poor, like poor behavior, then you would just get kicked out. It said, it's like you didn't you didn't have to go there. So they just kick you out. So there wasn't like a bad, bad group of students there, but she decided she wanted to branch out and, you know, get, get into some different friend groups and stuff for senior year. Because she wanted to be a bad student. Well, she, she just, I think she struggled to fit in. Like she just was like, I, I don't care for I don't this think, school in general. I, I don't, maybe she was just, isn't, wasn't a goody two shoes. And I think there's a lot of goody two shoes there. Not to speak poorly of it. I don't, I don't know. That's just what I gathered from this. Not like Caitlin. The what? anti goody two shoe. Am I? <laughs> That's right. Yep. No. Um, anyway, so at, at this time of her life, she was really starting to change and rebel. Um, Lori said that Ebby had started a new job. She changed schools and she started to hang out with a new friend group that she met at her job. So maybe some of them went to Central. I don't, I don't really know. And Lori and Michael basically gave Ebby a choice be respectful or move out. So Abby decided she wanted to branch out on her own. She was 18, so she left. She packed up all her stuff. And I saw that she lived with, I think, her grandmother or some family. She kind of lived with them a little bit, but also with her friend Danielle. And um, at the time of our case, when it is, she is living with Danielle, more or less. She still is kind of living out of her car a little bit. A lot of stuff still in there. So how, in what way was she like not respectful? Do you know? She just, I'm trying to remember what the article said, but which by the way, had some bunch of different articles from AY Magazine. Um, THV had an article, uh, The Murder Squad did, I think there's a podcast episode, Wikipedia, which Wikipedia had a lot of wrong information. I'll just say that. Uh, This is why I've been telling you, (laughs) you don't use Wikipedia. You use it as a source for finding sources. It was a good base, but then I branched out from it. Um, And also The Vanished, it's a podcast. They have an episode on it. And then Sutterfuge and Chalamont Park. Um, It's a podcast as well. I haven't listened to either of them, so I don't know how it is. 
Um, but they, their whole podcast is about it. So, um, what did she struggle? What was she, she was just rebelling. She just was, she just wanted to be on her own. She just, I, Lori said this new friend group kind of was a influence on her. She just wanted to be able to party and be kind of a young adult and not so much a kid, I think. So, and I think she struggled kind of emotionally with her parents' divorce, stemming from her parents' divorce when she was a kid, kind of said that she really struggled with that growing up. Yeah, that's one of those things, I guess she was going to go to cosmetology school, which is a little different, but like, you you meet people in college or like people you knew in high school when they go to college, right. they become very different. Yes. And they become decoupled from the family. Yes. They get to kind of find themselves a little bit. A hundred percent. And I think she was ready to find herself. I mean, she was at that point where I think her, maybe some of the friends she had were a little bit older um, at her work that she met her new friends. And I don't know, maybe that just like she just was ready to do her own thing. And she just kept butting heads with uh, Michael and Lori. So, um, on October 21st, uh, 2015, we're in 2015, Abby missed school at Central. She missed school. Um, there was no reason as to why she just missed school. And I'm assuming she missed it the next day as well, because on Friday, October 23rd, Abby attended a party that evening. On October 24th, Abby texted Michael. And she told her stepdad that she had been gang raped by four men at the party and she wanted to report it to authorities, which is like a heavy thing to text your text your stepdad. That's a lot. But he was very understanding. He said, tell me what happened. Um, Abby stated that the rape had been recorded on one of the men's cell phone. So they talked about it. They made plans to meet up and report it to the police. Um, Abby also sounded as if in the meantime, she was going to confront her attackers, which seems like a very, um, dangerous thing to do. I, I don't think I would recommend that. I think I no. would, um, maybe go to the police first, um, and let them handle it. But I, I don't think, especially solo, I, I don't think that's a good idea. I would not recommend that. I, I wouldn't either. That's, yeah. that's not, um, seems that's like a bad, bad idea. idea. Yeah. yeah. So, but they know, Abby and Michael never met up to go to the police, though. he I think he tried to contact her. She didn't respond. And so they never met up and went to the police. Abby also asked Michael to please not tell Lori about what she had confided in him, which is really sad. She was like, don't tell mom because she didn't want word to get out. She didn't want word to get out about this is what she said. So later that evening, Lori and Michael attempted to reach Abby multiple times by phone, but were unable to get a hold of her. Michael suspected that she had gone then to confront her attackers and retrieve the video, and that's where she was. That evening, two very brief phone calls lasting about a minute each were placed to the Little Rock Police Department from Ebby's phone, but no report came of those. There was no report filed. I guess it, they were too short or information wasn't like conveyed over it, but there was no report that was gleaned from them. Um, throughout that evening... Abby was texting and calling the men she implicated in her rape, threatening to report them to police. So they were able to see that. On October 25th, which is the next day, Abby called her older brother, Trevor, around 2 p.m. I've also seen 5.30 p.m. And I'm guessing that's actually more accurate because I saw the 2 p.m. on Wikipedia. So I'm going to say 5.30 p.m. Don't trust the Wikipedia. I told you. You're right. So I'm going to go with 5.30 p.m. Trevor said Ebby, she was talking and she seemed very disoriented during their conversation and just really out of it. She told him she was parked outside of his house. So Trevor hung up the phone and went outside to look, but there was nobody there. She was not outside of his house. So he immediately went back inside and call, called Ebby back. She answered and said she was in her car, but she was not sure where she was. So that's concerning. You know, that's very concerning. Um, and I have seen two different reports for the next words. They were not from Wikipedia. But I've seen two different reports for what the next words were from her. She either told Trevor, I effed up, except she used the word, I effed up, or I'm effed up. And those are two very different sentences. Yes, they are. So They mean very different things. Very different things. So, and I think it could go either way with them. I effed up as in like, I went and told the guys I, I messed yeah. up. I shouldn't have done that. I went and confronted them or something of the like, or, you know, or she said, I'm effed up, meaning I'm under the influence of something. So I don't know which is which, but either way, that's not good. Either, either, either way. And it can really go either way. I don't know. I don't know. But 
it's not good. But immediately after that, she hung up the phone. Um, but this was the last conversation that was known that Ebby had. I don't know if Trevor tried calling her back and she didn't pick up or if something else happened, but this was the last conversation that was ever recorded with Ebby. So shortly after that phone call, Ebby's family attempted to report her missing, but the police would only label her a runaway and said because she was an adult, she couldn't be reported missing for at least 12 hours, which is not true, by the way. Don't don't take no for an answer. Yeah. You don't have to be missing for any amount of time to what, file missing portions of the Was the movie from 1991? Exactly. Like, which was, I don't think that was even a thing then. I no. think it was just a weird movie trope for some reason. And I think that stuck around. And it's, no, you don't, it doesn't matter. You can, you can report somebody missing immediately. Don't take no for an answer. Yeah, because. Be a twat. The, the police want to find the person. That they're not going to be like. Ah, don't even worry about it. Well, that's what they told her. They were like... At least typically, yeah. I mean, so don't... It, it's a common misunderstanding. You don't have to wait 12 hours to file somebody... To report somebody missing. You can file it immediately. Yeah, it's like um, phone tracing in movies where they're like, gotta keep them on the lines. Like, that was never a real thing. It's not? No, you didn't, didn't find it immediately. Are you sure? Yeah. That's a, that's a myth. I need you to Google that. I need you to find... Google it again? Yeah, it's... I'll, I'll, I'll Google it. <laughs> Shut up. So, okay. So, two days later, on October 27th, Ebby's silver Volkswagen Passat was discovered by a security guard in a parking lot near a wooded area in Chalamont Park, which is a neighborhood in West Little Rock. And I, I'm not familiar with that. I asked John, I was like, what kind of place is that? And he said it's a really nice area. How do you pronounce it? Chalamont. Okay. I mean, it's C-H-A-L-A-M-O-N-T. I think that's right, yeah. Chalamont? That sounds right. Or Chalamont. I don't think it's that. Okay, we're going to Chalamont Park. John said it's a nice area. So the guard, this is frustrating, the guard called the police and waited approximately two hours for an officer to arrive. He had seen it the night before. And then when he saw it the next day, he was like, I need to report this. So he called the police and waited approximately two hours for an officer to arrive but no officer ever arrived. The next day he saw the car was still there. So he once again called the police who finally arrived about an hour later. And then they ran the license plate and discovered that it belonged to Ebby. So this girl that's now been reported missing. So when they arrived, they noticed that Ebby's car was out of gas. The battery was dead and the key was in the ignition. And all of her belongings, medication, and makeup were still in the vehicle. And Daniel and Lori both said that Ebby would never leave without her makeup, which I definitely get. I love makeup. Um, and they said it was strewn about and smashed, so they knew something was wrong. They're like, Abby loved her. Ebby loved her makeup, and like especially her makeup. And I mean, I'm sure it's expensive. And they're like, something's wrong. And the fact that you know, keys in the ignition, gas is out battery's dead the car was running for a substantial amount of time so a search of the park was quickly started um and they didn't really find too much that i'm aware of um and many other searches happened after the initial one but no additional evidence was found in the area or there's woods around it there was no nothing found in the surrounding woods and family and friends would continue search efforts passing out flyers across town and trying to find any details they could Look like you need to say something. No, no. I'm, okay. I, I was trying to find something. Okay. The investigation continued. The men that Ebby implicated in her rape were questioned, but none were arrested. No formal searches of their cell phones were ever done for the video of Ebby's rape or for anything else, I think. I think I read that they called them in to question them and said, can I search your cell phone? They declined, and that was it. Which I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, I get you. You kind of have to have a, a warrant and I all that. I think you can probably get a warrant for that if you tried. Probably. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not a cop. I'm not or either. A detective I'm just angry. Or a lawyer, or judge, or an expert in anything. Hey, we know a judge. We do. <laughs> the family attempted to hire a PI who was a former Little Rock Police LRPD officer, Little Rock Police Department officer. He initially declined, but as time went on he was aware of some blunders that went on from the PD. So he decided he would like to work with Ebby's family. Here's some of the blunders. They noticed that investigators with the LRPD were struggling with technology on Ebby's phone. 
And so the family, they like didn't know how to get into apps and stuff or like how to do it. And so the family, Abby's family offered to hire an IT expert to help them, but the department declined. Lori offered to bring them all of Abby's like phone records because they seemed to have trouble getting those. And so she was like, I can get them, I guess, you know, on the same plan. I can get whatever you want. Uh, they declined. On another occasion, they found that police never questioned the security guard that found Abby's car. Uh, like that the PI found that out was like, were you ever questioned? He said, no, I told them, you know, call me anytime. I'll come in if I need to. He was never questioned. Um, he said he had seen Ebby and a man talking there like the night before. And he had a dash cam and he said he probably had video of it on his dash cam, but it, they never called and questioned him. And that computer in the time, it was like months in that time, that computer had gone defunct and he had trashed it. So that video evidence was gone. Uh, so at every turn, it just kind of seemed like Lori was getting shut down and there was just blunders happening. It was just like mishandled. And Lori got very upset, rightfully so. Her and like the people in charge like were butting heads because she was like, this isn't right. And they're like, this is my territory. Burr, 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 burr. So in December of 2017, in an attempt to bring publicity to Ebby's case, Lori and Trevor appeared on the Dr. Phil show, which, okay, on the show, they discussed their dissatis dissatisfaction with the Little Rock Police Department and how they had filed a complaint against them. And Lori stated when the investigation began, another blunder, they left the trunk of Ebby's car open at an impound lot where it rained for days, destroying any evidence. So I feel like this is pretty elementary stuff that's getting going wrong. Lori said the searchers for her were not thorough and there was a lot of blame on Michael, which was totally unfounded. Like they started pointing, like as the investigation went on, they brought Lori and Michael in and began questioning them really hard. Like they were suspects and it was very, they're like, are you kidding me? Like there was no reason, you know what I mean? So Lori had taken all this information to internal affairs and received a letter from like from her complaint saying, well, we can't really prove or disprove anything you've said. So very unsatisfactory. What couldn't they, why couldn't they prove it? I don't I mean, know. I you, don't. You could go. I don't know what all the complaint said. So yeah, it's like so, you've, you I, probably have uh, like a recording of talking to us and stuff. Probably. So random people around the world would call Lori and Michael stating that they had Ebby and wanted ransom. And I um, actually, Lori had spoken with um, Morgan Nick's mom, who's in charge of the Morgan Nick foundation. And they have been in contact because that's a support thing for people with missing children. Um, and basically she, she was like, this is a thing that happens a lot. Isn't that so sad? People with missing kids, this happens. She said this happens all the time. They get called up and they're like, we have your kid for ransom. How do you know what to believe? You know what I mean? Because they, they can probably find your social security number and be like, I have all this, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, I mean, uh, if you're a kidnapper, like, what? I, if you're just calling, I guess, you know, there, there's no not a good way to yeah. prove it. Yeah, exactly. Like, how do you prove it? And there's people have people with missing kids deal with this a lot, apparently which is disgusting. Um, so I put that this was an incredibly difficult time, all while dealing with a missing child and sibling and daughter. And anyway, but the family still persevered. Um, they had fundraisers to bring awareness to Ebby's case. And they donated uh, the money to organizations dealing with trafficking, human trafficking and human trafficking victims, because it was a leading theory um, that Ebby had been trafficked. Um, a sighting was phoned in on March 2018 and it was like a really big deal. There's a bunch of news reports about it, but it was all, it was false. But the girl did look a lot like Abby. A $50,000 reward was raised and offered for information leading to the discovery of Abby. And in the meantime, where Abby's car had been found at Chalamont Park, it just like became a shrine. There was flowers and stuff all out there. So um, at some point... Um, Detective Tommy Hudson, who we've talked about before, I believe it was in Ann Presley's case. Um, he was, uh, he's a retired now Little Rock, um, detective. But in the meantime, Ebby's case got handed over to him. If they said there was some kind of reasons why, like they kind of talked about it, like it was a little bit shifty, but I think because there was such, you know, bad blood between Lori 
and some other officers involved with the case, they handed it over to Detective Hudson, who was a fresh set of eyes. He'd worked with many cases. He was very experienced. So, um, anyways, on t- at 10 a.m. on May 24th, 2018, on a hunch, he said, on a hunch, Detective Hudson decided to search the Shalomont Park area once more, very thoroughly. He stated there was some evidence found at the scene that just didn't sit right with him, and he wanted to search a nearby drainage pipe more thoroughly. It was it's a really big drainage pipe. So excavators were brought in to dig out debris. Cameras were sent down. The more debris and more of the stuff was removed, and a camera sent down again. And it was there 60 feet from where Ebby's car was found, 60 feet from where Ebby's car was found in a cement drainage pipe that skeletal remains were discovered. And I, there's a p- aerial picture of uh, it's like shows the distance between the areas of, of the car and finding the skeletal remains. So we'll put that on there, but it was confirmed that these were Ebby's remains 60 feet from her car. It does sound like they really bungled this one. I know. Um, so it was just crazy to me because multiple searches had been done before and they said they were extensive searches, but I I don't know. I mean, how extensive could it have been? You know, it sounds a lot like when, um, I was a kid, my mom would tell me to find something and it's like, I look kind of in the room Mm -hmm. and don't do anything. I'm like, I looked for it and she's like, did you look everywhere? Yeah. And she's like, like, yeah, she like walks in, pulls up one thing. It's like, there it is right there. (laughs) Yeah. You didn't pull up the one thing that's like obviously where it would probably be. That happened the other day. Uh, John was like, you know, I've seen funny memes and stuff about this. But he's like, where's the leave? I was like, it's in the medicine closet. He's like, it's not in here. And I just walked right up. And I was like, it's literally right in front of your face. <laughs> so, it, yeah, it's just like that. So, um, Margie Foley, she was the mother to one of Ebby's best friends. She assisted on some of the searches and she would go in and search independently as well. Like she would go back to the park and she had notified police, I think more than once. I'm not sure, but I think more than once that she smelled decomposition in the area because that is a very distinct smell. You know that smell if you smelled it before. And when officers arrived, Margie said they were kind of like dismissive and they told her that recovery canines had searched the area and they would have picked up the smell of decomposition. And they assured her it was just an animal. And it's like, you should have taken this seriously. There's a missing girl. What really concerns me is this was so very recent. 2015. This was not long ago. In 20, I mean, 2015 to 2018. I mean, that was a couple years ago, very recently. So, um, Ebby was found, her remains were found, but there were still a lot of questions about it. And a lot of them haven't been answered at this point. There's been no official cause of death released. Detective Hudson stated they were treating this like a homicide, though. And he said he had an idea of how she had been killed, but didn't say anything past that. So they're keeping it very close to the close to the chest, close to the vest. Vest? You know, I think both. You know what I'm trying works, to say. Actually. So Hudson also stated that Michael, Trevor... Ebby's father, Ebby's mother, nobody in the family is a suspect in the case. So that's good. Uh, Lori told THV 11 News in Little Rock. This was really sad. Even if they found Ebby a week after she went missing, she would still be dead. But they probably could have had more answers, though. You know, they probably could have gotten more data, basically. And hopefully not left the trunk open for it to be rained on. For real, though. (laughs) And any, you know, and that's so sad because anything around her remains, it's gone. You know, any evidence is washed. It's gone. It's gone. So it's been, I mean, it's been three years. It's gone. Lori also spoke with AY Magazine about a year after Ebby's remains were found. Instead of the situation, now that it's final, it's moved to a whole different world of having a deceased daughter. It's different now. It truly is grieving. There's realizing that there's an obituary. And I've got a daughter I'm never going to see on this earth again. It's completely final. And that was so sad. It's like she had to go from a glimmer of hope. And and she said she was very realistic. She said, I know the statistics. I know that after a certain amount of time, it's likely that, you know, she wasn't going to be found alive. But you just have that glimmer of hope. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, like you kind of assume yeah. the worst to some extent yeah. but there's always even just like that one yes. percent of possibility maybe but she honestly said that because 
her being a human trafficking victim was very high on the, like they thought it was a theory, you know, that they were kind of, she could have been, could have been trafficked. Um, and so Lori was like, I'm, you know, she didn't suffer, you know, she's been there for a while, whatever happened, it happened a long time ago and she's not living in a situation where she's suffering for years and years. And so she's like, I- I'm at least we have peace, you know, and I have peace that she's you know, like, like I said, they're a very religious family. She said, I have peace that she's with God. So, um, but that it's still not easy. You know, it still can't be easy at all. So the search for Abby's killer or killers is still ongoing. Detective Hudson has since retired, but hopefully this is still a good number to reach the cold case unit at. I read a couple different articles. It looks like it probably is 501-404-3128. That's 501-404-3128. And just like all of our unsolved cases, somebody knows something there is at least one person out there that knows something, if not four that know something. And they deserve to be held responsible for what they did to Abby. Um, there is a $10,000 reward being offered for information leading to the rest of her killer or killers. And that is the story of Abby Jane. Another delightful episode full of joy. <laughs> That's what we bring to the table here. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks in yeah. so many ways. So many ways. It was just bunk. And I'm not, you know, I know the Little Rock Police Department is probably inundated with crimes that they're dealing with, but that was a lot of rudimentary mistakes that I think occurred. You know, that's not, that's from, you know, one perspective, but it seems like there was a lot of mistakes that happened that could have been avoided. Yeah. Here's a mistake you can all avoid. What? Get your vaccines, idiots. And that's all I'm going to say. Because <laughs> yeah, we, we we <laughs> we've talked about this way too long in yeah. a previous podcast. Yeah. And we talked about it off the air about how annoyed we are with stuff. Yeah. Just get vaccinated. Wear your mask. It's simple. It's simple, folks. Do do I, the bare minimum for your fellow person. I the am, bare minimum. I am literally the laziest person I know. Yeah. <laughs> I still went out and got a COVID vaccine. And you wear a mask. Yeah. So... so it's if the easy. laziest person can do it, so can you. <laughs> Just don't be selfish. Quit being selfish. Yeah. Anyway, we're off of it. We're go. Yep, we're moving Get on. on. Get on. Okay. Um, we obviously, first of all, how many Star Wars is? One. I think so. I can't remember. It's been so long since we recorded. Bad batch. I think the final episode came out in between recordings. I don't remember. It's, it's, <laughs> it's been, been so long. It's been so long. It's been fourteen days. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, we are going to be moving to uh, every fortnight. I believe is the term. I love it. Yeah. So every two weeks. Yeah. Uh, still, I think lo- Tuesdays would be. Yeah. It'll still be Tuesdays. Uh, just real life has been a little he- too hectic lately to keep up the schedule. It especially has been so hectic. Especially since we make zero dollars. Zero. Yes. And I'm getting called in so much. And you know what? We're having to stay with those patients in the cath lab because there's nowhere to go with them. When yeah. you come in for a heart attack, there's nowhere for you to go. Exactly. So get vaccinated. Anyway. Um, I'm off it. <laughs> um. Another thing I've been looking at, uh, yeah. first of all, okay. Caitlin, look in my eyes. I'm doing what it. What do you see? The cult of personality. I watched wrestling. CM Punk is back. What? Oh my God. It was amazing. AEW that? Rampage. On Friday night, CM Punk came back in Chicago. And I know you don't understand how big a deal that I is, don't. but that was 15,000 people losing their minds in this arena people in one place it's a big arena okay it's the united center in chicago where the bulls play oh oh man thousand isn't much i mean it's about how many you can put in there it was sold out Uh, oh it was the craziest thing and here's what's here's what's wild about it like everybody knew he was going to be there but they never actually announced he was going to be there they would just have like little hints Mm -hmm. and stuff um and I saw people on Twitter who don't ever talk about wrestling mm-hmm. who were talking about this. And they watched it. And again, they never actually announced he was going to be there. Yeah. And yet those people knew somehow. It was wild. Um, See, so yeah, I watched. Uh, there was a lot of. You watched wrestling this week. Oh, man. That's what you did. It, it was so great. And he came. It, he had been gone for seven years from wrestling. Why? Because uh, he hated WWE so much that he was like, I am done. I'm quitting. And now he needs money. So he's back. Now he's doing fine on money. Oh. 
because uh, he does he does other stuff. Uh, yeah, and it was it was great though. I uh, you should watch the video just to be like, what? I think I'm good. <laughs> oh man, and his song is the Colts' personality. I don't know that song. You don't? You never heard it? Nope. It goes like, there now, 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 now. Look in my eyes. What do you see? Oh, that's so pretty. The cult of personality. It's a very good song. I've just listened to it. It was so great. Um, also, and uh, to contrast that, in WWE, Becky Lynch came back, and that was awesome. Until it wasn't, because she just beat Bianca Belair in like five seconds, and it sucked. And I was like, uh-huh. what are y'all doing? Bianca y'all? Belair. Oh, man. Oh. It sucked. Also, I wanted to talk mess to you. I meant to talk mess to you. Okay. I think it was last time we had an episode. Yep. I mentioned a wrestler in Japan who had uh, pneumonia. And oh. you're like, oh, that's probably COVID. Is it? No. Okay. And he's back. He's he's fine. He's scheduled to have a match soon against Tanahashi. But I also wanted to mention... What was that? What, what did... Did you hear that? I did. Am I still... Re- can you hear Are me? Are we good? Yeah, I hear Okay. You. What uh, if anybody else heard that? <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, I was just going to say, your conspiracy theory is uh-huh. bunk because they've admitted when other people had COVID. Oh. Including currently, the champion, Shingo Takagi, <gasps> has COVID. Not Shingo Takagi. Yeah, he's he's awesome. Okay. The dragon. Anyway, oh. why don't you run a couple things through? Oh, um, I want to talk about how good the uh, Coke with coffee is that you hated so much. Oh, I forgot to bring that for you. I know. It was disgusting. It's amazing. I hated it so much. It's this new thing that Coke has. It's like... It's Coke with coffee in it. I mean, that's what it is. And it has like vanilla flavor as well. It's amazing. And I love it a lot. I thought it was vile. It was <laughs> disgusting. I loved it. But I love Coke and I love coffee and I love vanilla and it tastes like sugar. So I like all three of those things too. I know. I loved it. I, keep, I like. I keep getting them at work. I like pizza and orange juice and V8. I'm not going to mix those all together and be like, yep, this is fine. <laughs> that's terrible. That's not how it works. I what lo- are you talking about? I loved it. I I think everybody should at least try it. At least try I was curious enough. To, I, when I see weird stuff like that, I'm like, I got to try it. How many did you buy? Uh, I didn't. Uh, I bought two. There's oh. two. So I drank one. And I was like, nope. Oh, really? <laughs> and I meant to bring the other one for you since also, you were like, those are good. They're very good. Something, I don't know if we talked about it last time. I can't remember. It's been so long. The Kit Kat. Do we talk about the Kit Kat? I don't think so. John got me. There's a new flavor of Kit Kat, and I shouldn't eat it because it has dairy in it and probably gluten, and I'm supposed to be dairy-free, gluten-free now, but... I'm 90% sure it has both of yeah, those. But this is just a little bit. It was a... I think they said fruity cereal because I can't say, like, fruity pebbles, but it was, like, fruity pebbles Kit Kat, and it was amazing. It was so good. Did you try it? No, no. Oh, you weren't here? No. It was so good. It was it is my favorite. Ca- it takes the cake. It's number one now. But the birthday cake one does not take the cake. No, it doesn't. No. no. It's the Fruity Pebbles. It was amazing. I'm just so happy um, as an American the that we're, we're getting finally the getting yes. the weird Kit Kats. Because you always heard about like, Japan's got crazy Kit Kats. It's a strawberry shortcake Kit Kat. It's, it's like, well, it's amazing. I can I that. have that? Yeah. I want to try that. I mean, like lychee, lychee, lychee. I don't fruit. know what you're saying. It's a fruit. L-Y-C-H-E-E. Licky. No, um, it's a very popular flavor in Asian countries, uh, but I don't think it would hit as well here. But strawberry shortcake sure would. I would you buy would the heck so. out of that. I mean, I was big. I'm a big fan of the uh, dark chocolate mint one they I have. I love that one. That, that was one was awesome. That one was number one until I had the fruity pebblesy one. So good. All right, what else you got? Uh, um. <laughs> we're just random stuff. I write it down when I think about it. I guess my new glasses. I don't have them on, but I'm getting new glasses. I've had these glasses. How long do you think I've had these glasses? Ten years. Five. Oh. Ten would be too long. That's an insane amount of time. I don't know. I've never had to wear glasses because of my superiority Ouch. with eye genetics. This this over here, this little leg on the side here, whatever you call that thing on the side of your earpiece, I've had to super glue that like five times five times doesn't sound like it's very super glue is it well it's super and then i just bend it and i hit it ju- it doesn't bend and so i hit it just right and it just snaps it well stop but that it's very fragile you know don't so do that so i was like Ugh, it's time for new glasses so sounds like I've time for you to for so uh take care of stuff better instead of bending it all the time i need you to get off me um and i got that's what she said i knew i got these things called stoggles 
I'm so excited to get these. Stoggles? Stoggles. Because we have Some to wear... Some sort of goggle thing. Yes. They're, I think it's stylish goggles. Stoggles. Okay. But, you know, at work, we have to wear PPE, which is the personal protective equipment. And they have to be goggles for like... Or if we have glasses, we can put these ridiculous eye shields on here that are very bulky and annoying. So I got these stoggles and they're real cute. And they're like cute glasses, but they also have extra like plastic right here. And on the side, so that's considered PPE, and I can just wear those. Do they, it is my prescription. Do they look like those old uh, sports goggles that people used to wear, like Hor- uh, Horace Grant? I don't know who that person is. You know what I'm talking about, though. The no. they're like glasses. No. For um, here, I'll show you for that. for basketball men. Here's Horace Grant. Here's a picture of him. Look how silly those are. No, they don't look. He like played that. for the Bulls back in the day. I got some green ones. That's what they look like. Oh, those are lame. They're amazing. Oh, um, they look fine. And they have my prescription in them. So I don't have to wear, because normally I have to wear my glasses and then the stupid things on the side. But if I'm wearing those, I can't wear my big giant respirator because it doesn't all fit. And then I have to wear goggles over my glasses and it's very cumbersome. So I was like, I'm just going to get these. Why wouldn't you, why, why didn't you just like be born better though? And just you have not to take have that up eye with problems. My, you got to take that up with my parents. Um, they have a lot of explaining to do for a I, lot of different things. <laughs> But um, I don't guess anybody in my immediate family has to wear glasses. Well, they, my parents do now because they're, you know, well, they they're getting up yeah, there. Yeah. But before they didn't. So, yeah. um, John and I did a lot of volcano talking, and it all started with we went to Little Rock and we rode by Pinnacle Mountain, and I said, "Is Pinnacle Mountain a volcano, <laughs> or was it a volcano?" And he said, "No." I remember as a kid thinking it was because if you see it. It looks like it looks one, like a volcano. One of the bridges, if you yes. see it from far away, yes. the way the like the peak is, yes. it looks like the typical volcano from a cartoon yes. where it's like it goes up and then like kind of goes flat and then down yes. in the back. So yeah, I was I was like, is that it a volcano? Looks, or are we gonna die one yes. day? Yes. And so I asked John, he said, no. No. Well, he actually, I found that you just keep learning and lots of stuff about the people you love. He said I wanted to be a geologist initially, and so a lot of his classes were like biology and geology related and i was those like, are two very different things though well but it, you know what i mean and so one of those involves the study of life the other not at all <laughs> you know what i mean but a geologist still might get like fossils and stuff that's a paleontologist well whatever semantics anyways but so we were talking and Anyways, he was like, the Pinnacle Mountain is not a volcano. I was like, I'm going to Google this. I don't believe you. It, it looks just like a cartoon volcano. There's, he was right. It's not a volcano. Well, of course he was right. What a ridiculous question. Well, then I asked, is there any volcanic or old volcanoes in Arkansas? The answer is yes. Do you oh, want yeah. to know about it? Sure. Crater Diamond State Park. Yeah. And that's how all the diamonds get up. They're, they were made and pushed up. And from the, it's a, it's called a, vac- a volcanic shelf, I think. Don't hold me to it. Volcanic, uh like a tube or something i don't know but magma goes through it or did but it's good but then he started talking about yellowstone and it got really scary yeah there's a lot of um stuff about how like yellowstone hasn't erupted in however long yeah and we're due Pretty it's gonna much. be big uh, uh if it makes you feel better it's only been six hundred thirty thousand years since the last eruption and there's usually about 1.3 million years between each eruption so we still got some time maybe Maybe we don't deserve it, though. Um, it Just w- let it happen. Like Dwight. He's like, <laughs> we need another plague. Well, we got we one, have Dwight, one, And you know what? It's not really. <laughs> anyway. Um, so anyways, all that to say, we went on some, we watched some volcano sh- volcano shows. And I was like, I feel like like a s- bit of a savant right now. Because I'm like really delving into volcanoes after one random question. Have, what would y'all watch? Like Dante's Peak, <laughs> Joe versus the Volcano? <laughs> it was on. Um, like Discovery stuff? The Smithsonian Channel. Okay. Uh, and they have a lot of good documentaries. And I was gonna say, stuff. did y'all watch that Yellowstone National Geographic movie that they made where no. it was like about Yellowstone exploding and Kinda. it was like fictionalized though? Well, it was like a fictional film. This wasn't this wasn't a film, it was like a documentary, but it was called it's called the Yellowstone Caldera. And it's basically the whole area of Yellowstone plus like all the surrounding states. It's like a big sh- sh- volcanic area that it yeah. sits on top That's of. That's how the geyser works. Yeah. So anyways, all that. And then I asked him if you heard that song, the 1816, The Year Without a Summer. Oh, that weird. Yeah, that's a, that by Rasputina. By Rasputina. Yeah. And yeah. he said no. And I was like, I'm going to show it to you because 1816 was unusually cold because of an eruption of a volcano that happened in 1815. And there was sca- ash scattered around the world. The, the Little Ice Age. Yes. Because John was like, if if 
Yellowstone goes, it's worldwide lost. And I was like, I don't think worldwide. I definitely think U.S., like, for sure. But it would have worldwide repercussions. And I was like, hey, we go into another Ice Age. Let me show you this song. It's like... Um, Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein during <laughs> 1860 right. because everybody stayed inside that year. Uh, there was also a famine. Have you ever heard of, like, the... Uh, when Krakatoa exploded as a volcano? Yeah. And, it, like, it, the sound was so, like, vast that it traveled around the entirety of the globe holy cow and like people like hundreds of miles away like had their eardrums burst no way. from how loud it was yeah Wait, where's krakatoa uh, i think it's in the pacific somewhere in the hawaii no more like uh New east asia i think i don't remember okay but yeah th- when did it explode probably like 17 1800 something like that holy cow i don't remember but yeah like I, yeah it was, it was pretty wild so, yeah, come here for um, any information you want to know about volcanoes or history. We're now a history podcast. Volcanoes and such are why I wouldn't want to live in a Seattle area because mm-hmm. they have Washington. They, ha- and- they have the possibility of your standard earthquake, mm-hmm. possibility of a volcano, mm-hmm. and tsunami. And tsunami, which is an earthquake in the sea right. causing the big water waves. to big shift waves. and it's a big thing. Big waves. Yeah. They also showed stuff about that on that documentary. Yeah. Um, I watched the Suicide Squad on, H- watched it yet. on HBO you Max. Watch it. All right. Well, I won't say too much other than it is. I like it a lot. It's very funny. Uh, it's James Gunn yes. getting to do what he wants to do. So it's very funny. It's also very R rated. Oh, really? Very gory. Yes, much gore. Hmm. Uh, John Cena is amazing in it. Really? He's one of the, yeah. <laughs> he he's a character called Peacemaker uh-huh. who's like overly patriotic weirdo he's like i'd do anything for peace no matter how many men women and children i have to kill <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that's funny. Um, i need to watch it you do i don't know how long it's going to be on there because they pull those after a while oh yeah they do pull pretty quickly yeah i never got to see that wonder woman <laughs> movie that nobody likes i liked it okay you like everything though i do um i watched what if first oh, episodes I, of what if i haven't watched any of that i like it it's very cool to see alternate universe and it's really gonna i think it's coming into play into the multiverse you like setup that's happening that'd be interesting because i assumed it was going to be just like its own thing well i think it is but it's definitely playing into the multiverse thing um first episode is about um it's not agent carter it's captain britain yeah whatever they call her yeah um and then the second episode is about um t'challa if he was um star lord yeah, I think that that something I don't know if it's that, but something in What If was the last thing that Chadwick it Boseman was, did. He voiced he voiced himself in that. Yeah. He voiced T'Challa in that. It was in in the end of the episode. There's a nice tribute to him. Um, I really like it. It's just fun to see What If and to see the characters like like uh, you you see Nebula in the second episode, and it's interesting to see her if Thanos didn't have. You know, it was different because Thanos didn't, wasn't... Didn't roboticize her and yeah. all that. Yeah. And pretty much all the original cast is was back to voice themselves, except um, Chris Evans didn't voice um, Captain America. <clears throat> and what was the other one? Oh, Dave Baut- Bautista. Bautista. Yeah. He didn't voice Drax. <clears throat> and there's Caitlin's wrestling reference. Yes. Yeah. That's the only one I ever know. And, and John, John Cena. Cena. And, and The, the Rock. Rock. And Hulk Hogan. Well, he's one too, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. You probably have heard of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yep. Is he the one that looks like my dad? Yes. Him and Goldberg both. Goldberg. That's what it is. Bald guys with, Bald guys with goatees. Beard. Yeah. That's. Um, I've been playing a game called Splitgate. Um, what is that? It is basically Halo meets Portal. Oh. It's really cool. Have, did you ever play Portal? No, but I've watched it be played a lot. Okay. So it's straight up like portals that operate like that. Uh-huh. Um, it's a multiplayer shooter. And it's uh, You can only put the portals on certain surfaces. Okay. It's very obvious, but you go like, here's an entry portal, here's an out portal, and you can sh- see through it, and you can shoot at people through it, or just go through it. You can run through it. Cool. Um, it is very cool, because there's, there's been so many like cool things I've done, like uh, I threw down like uh, one portal and somebody was chasing me. So I threw down another portal, ran through it. And so I ended up right behind them and just took them out. That's funny. It's amazing. It's so cool. 
Um, and it straight up is like Halo. I know these references won't make sense for you, but maybe for people at home, like they straight I've up. I've seen Halo be played. Yeah, but you don't know the terms and stuff. Like they're like, hey, this is the battle rifle. It's a three round burst. You know, like the battle rifle from Halo. <laughs> anyway, here's the um, full auto assault rifle, just like the assault rifle from Halo. Gotcha. Here's the rocket launcher. It holds two rockets at a time, just like the rocket launcher from Halo. A lot of, lot of inspo from Halo. Here's a game mode called Team SWAT, where everybody gets battle rifles <laughs> and headshots are instant death. Just like that mode in Halo that was called Team SWAT. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> it's like straight up. Is it the same people? I don't think any of them, I don't know if any of them worked for for them at any point huh. for 343 three or Bungie, but yeah. uh, it is straight up like, this is very much... It is straight it's up Halo. Halo. We're just playing. It's Halo, Halo but portals, and yeah. it's also free to play. Oh, uh, so I don't know. Download it on your PS4 or Xbox. I will say something. I am playing that you're gonna be very happy about. Is it Stardew? It's Stardew Valley. How are you liking it? Love it. It's fun. Have you found anybody to that you're gonna try and marry? Well, me and John are doing it together. Oh, okay, so you just you a, two. Yeah, we. Are you, you, you can do a co-op thing, split screen co-op thing. Um, we haven't had the opportunity that's not come up yet. We're still pretty new in it. We've only gotten down one season, basically. Um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, there's fishing really sucks on that game. Hate you, it. You get better at it. I hate it a lot. Because you get better fishing rods and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, it sucks. And also keep in mind, like, the fishing. If you want to complete the all the fishing challenges, uh, some fish only come when it rains, some only at night, I've and only that. in certain seasons and in certain places. That's like a... That's like a um, What's that other game? Um, Animal Crossing? Animal Crossing. Yeah, it's like Animal Crossing. Well, I tried to get you to get Stardew forever ago because it was $15 instead of 60 or whatever. I think it's 10 right now. Uh, it, it has been on sale. Does it sound echoey to you? Can you hear nope. that? Uh, I think maybe. I, tu- I think I touched something and it messed everything oh, up. Oh, gosh. Have fun editing. Uh, I don't have a way to fix that. So. Sorry if this sounds weird, everybody. It's just going to sound weird. This isn't the part weird. people listen for anyway. That's true. I also watched a little bit more of Adventure Time Season 2. It gets better. I mean, it's a good, it's a fun show. Yeah, it is. It gets a lot better. Uh, I, I like the Enchiridion and the. Have you gotten the Enchiridion yet? No. Or uh, the Lich. Mm, maybe is that the one that possesses Princess Bubblegum? Yeah. Yes. If so, yes. <laughs> I loved it. Oh my jeez! Oh my jeez! <laughs> I did fall asleep, and so I've, there is an episode I missed. But whatever episode I missed, like I was watching, I fell asleep, woke up, a new episode was going on. But it couldn't have been very long because uh, my cup of coffee was still hot. So oh, it was <laughs> I, a thirty-minute nap. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, twenty, if that. Yeah, that's that's all I got though. I really I love it. We've watched more of it. We're into the near the end episodes. Near the, we're near the end of the show. And then you get to watch those specials on HBO Max. Yeah, I didn't even know about those. Yeah, so. you're welcome. This is definitely echoey. I'm hearing it you hearing more it? and more as bop, we bop, talk. Bop, bop, but bop, 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 bop. That, that, that's not helpful bop, bop, <laughs> at all. Bop. Echo. Uh, what you? What? What else you got? Anything? I think that's about it. I think All that's right. everything. I think the echo is a sign that we need to get going. Okay. Well, I hope this doesn't mess everything up, for everybody. Sorry, I barely touched a cord, and I think it messed that's everything up. All it takes. Yeah, it's a very delicate situation. Uh, but guys, thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it. We appreciate you. And we'd really appreciate it if you got vaccinated, if you're not already, and wear your mask. Um, anyway, um, you can catch us on Facebook at Paint the Town Dead. You can catch us on Twitter at PTTD Pod. And you can catch us on Instagram at Paint the Town Dead, all one word, and email at PTTD Pod at gmail.com. We have a TikTok that we've done nothing with, and it's PTTD Pod. Um, I'm trying, trying to think what else. Is that everything? I think that's everything. I know I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention enough. Okay. Okay. Um, we drop episodes now every other week, which you can call bi-weekly, but then it sounds like you're doing it twice a week. So it's a lot of debate on that. Um, word. there's specific word. Fortnite. Fortnite. But I can't remember if it's like, I think bi-weekly means every two weeks and you would say twice weekly if it was two a week. But I'm not sure. But we yeah. have the word Fortnite. So, and that's that's a pretty popular game. So we'll just go with that. Yeah. And it's probably going to be on Tuesdays-ish, you know, life. Um, but anyways, thanks again, guys. We'll see you in a little while. Have a great week. And remember, 
Look in my eyes, what do you see? The cult of personality.